Mathematical lore has it that uh, at the peak of her career, whenever she was praised for the depth and originality of her work, Eminenter used to say, es steht alles schon bei Dedeke. All of this was already in the work of Dedeke. What does she mean by that? And to what extent can we take her words at face value? Well, those are the questions that I will be addressing in my talk today. I will be doing that by focusing on the works of both mathematicians uh, related to the theory of ideals and concerning the question of factorization in the domains that, were, that they were investigating. I should say that uh, the work of Dedekind has attracted attention for a long time now and uh, among the historians that have investigated the origins and development and the influence of his theory of ideals, we must mention first of all uh, Harold Edwards who started a series of important articles in 1980, for example this one that you see here, The Genesis of Ideal Theory. Later on I used those uh, works together with other things and my own research uh, in a, a chapter that I devoted in my book on the history of modern algebra to the work of Dedeke. If we uh, want to look at the passage, at the development of ideas, beginning with Dedekin and going up to Netter concerning ideals, then we are talking actually about a period of at least 50 years that starts in 1871 with the publication of the first version of Dedekin's theory of ideals. He had been working on that a long time before and he published the first version in the, or as part of a supplement, the 10th supplement to the uh, les, uh, lectures for Lesungen über den Zahlentheorie of a, a Dirichlet which he edited and published. Eminetter published her ideas starting in 1921 with this famous article Ideal Theorie in Ringbereichen so that you can see here this gap of at least 50 years and of course we can think that I mean 50 years of work of important mathematicians you would not say that everything was already in Dedekind and still this is what Netter said or used to say for example if we take the formulation of two of these uh, uh, results that uh, Dedekind and uh, Netter worked out in their works. So we have, for example, Dedekind saying that every ideal is the least common multiple of all the powers, uh, powers of prime ideals that divide it, whereas Netter would say every ideal is factorizable as a reduced intersection of primary ideals. We have to go deeper into the details of what every one of them says in order to understand the similarities and differences when they talk about this. For example, if we take one of the later versions, 1879, by Dedekin, uh, when he is defining some basic concepts about ideals, for example, he, he writes as follows, an ideal A or a number alpha is divisible by an ideal D or a number a number delta, if and only if all the powers of prime ideals of D or of delta appear also in A or in alpha. And I of course stress this or in alpha, delta, etc. because here we see that the definitions put forward by Dedekind refer to a certain number within the idea and this is something that Dedekind was not very satisfied about in part of the evolution of the various versions of his theory has to do with the attempt to get rid of the individual um, elements that have to be chosen in order to formulate the concepts and to prove the theorems. Look at this formulation by, the, by Netter in 1921, which is typical of her work. In a ring with the ascending change condition, every ideal is representable as a reduced intersection of a finite number of indecomposable ideals, which are also primary, and the number of such ideals and the collection of associated prime ideals is invariant. 
for every given ideal, though probably not the specific, the specific uh, primary ideas used for the factorizations are not. So what do we see here in this formulation? Here we see, of course, the um, use of a chain condition as the basic uh, condition over which the theorem is proved and the fact that all the properties uh, relate to the ideas themselves rather than to specific elements without the idea. So by comparing these two uh, formulations we can already uh, put our finger on what will be the decisive uh, path to which these development ideas will go through the ages from a formulation in which the the, cho the, the choice of individual members of the ideal is important towards one in which the abstract a formulation based on the ideas themselves is the one that is important. For example, if we look at, at one of the basic problems that Dedekind had to solve at the beginning with his uh, theory, namely to formulate uh, theorems or results concerning prime factorization, one of the main obstacles was how to deal with multiple factors in the generalized domains that he was working with. So Netter will, come, will eventually come up with the idea of primary ideals as the way to address this question, whereas Dedekind in the various versions of his work had to try or tried to uh, elaborate these ideas without, of course, at the beginning, without knowing exactly where he was going. For example, in the first edition, 1871, we can see that he introduces a certain idea, he called it simple ideas, and if we look at the uh, definition of what is a simple idea, which he then abandoned later on, but here you see the problem, because this definition, and never mind the details, look more at the style. The style is one in which you compare or you um, find the relationships between different ideas, but looking at certain properties of certain elements within the idea. Here you have the mu and the eta that Dedekind have to describe something about their powers and how they are um, a part of a certain power of an idea, etc. Again, this is something that Dedekind would not be satisfied with, and this is what led him to uh, formulate different versions of his theory. In, already in the first edition, the first version, 1871, we have, or we can look at two crucial achievements that will be central for the further development of the theory. The first one is the definition, the realization, that the main domain where factorization has to be investigated in the generalized domains that he was uh, looking at is the domain of the algebraic integers. And the second achievement is the idea that the definition or uh, is the definition of the main tool with which he will be investigating that factorization. And these tools is the ideal. So, for example, to put things more concrete, if you want to investigate uh, um, unique factorization properties in a domain such as G here, A plus B uh, square root of minus 3, where A and B are integers, where, how and where should you investigate that? Then Dedekind says, okay, consider the domain omega of uh, numbers of the kind A plus B square root of minus 3 with A, B rational, and this is a subfield of the complex uh, of the field of complex numbers. So, first of all, you have this subfield as a, an important domain in the, uh, in, the, in the discourse that he's going to develop, and then within it, you, uh, you choose to look at the domain D of algebraic integers of omega, which are defined as those numbers which are roots of an irreducible monic polynomial with integer coefficients. And then it turns out that G, the domain that we wanted to investigate, is uh, a sub-domain of that domain D, and that the right theorems would come up if we look at D rather than at G. 
And how do we do that? We do that with the help of the ideas. The ideas are defined by looking at the ideal, or the, at the beginning, at the collection of numbers that are multiples of a given number in the domain. Of course, you have here the two basic properties that the sum or difference of, uh, of two such numbers are in the domain, and that any a, a number multiplied by a number in the domain is again a domain. So here the Deakin says, this, is, this will be the basis of my theory, because I look at these collections, of course, these are what we call principal ideas, but it turns out, and this is the main insight of the Deakin at the beginning, that there are some ideas which are not principal. And with the help of them, we can formulate a general theory of factorization. Look, it is very interesting that this idea, this idea of ideals is very similar to the idea that Dedekind introduced in order to uh, research and to, and to uh, understand the phenomenon of continuity in the real numbers with the help of the concept of the cat. Because uh, when Dedekind defined cats of rational numbers, he realized that if you take the cat, for example, that is defined by the number two, namely those rational numbers that are larger, bigger than two or smaller than two. Well, here you have a cat, but there are cats of the rationals which are not defined by a number in the domain. And by using these two kinds of cats, he was able to formulate a theory of continuity. And very similar is the case here with the ideals. And in general, this was an important approach followed uh, by Dedekind in many of his research. But I think ideals and cats are the most interesting examples of this. So, some cuts are generated by rational, some are not, and some ideals are generated by a number, principal ideas, and some are not. And with the help of all of kinds of ideas that we can define in a domain, we can formulate the desired theory of unique factorization. But in the first um, version, Dedekind still had many definitions and proofs which were based on operations with individual numbers. And this is something he didn't like, and in the following versions of his theory, he will be developing new concepts, which I am calling here increasingly structural, namely based on the properties of collections of numbers, not of individual numbers, and uh, in which we don't look at the specific properties of the individual numbers that are part of the idea, but rather on the properties of the ideas themselves. Of course, I cannot go into the details and explain you how the different versions are actually increasingly structural, but I hope that you get the main idea of this. And uh, I will give just one example to show you this. For example, this is a very interesting example from the 1894 version in which we see something that is very interesting from our point of view nowadays. Given a chain of modules, A1, A2, AN, contained in a given finitely generated module N, and such that AI is contained in AI plus 1 for all indexes I, then, says Dedekin, there exists an index K such that AI equals AK for all K greater or larger than I. And it is easy to see that this is a kind of ascending change condition that Dedekin was already quite uh, focusing on it. And of course, this is the kind of ideas that we can uh, see uh, as those that Netter referred to when she said that es steht alles schon bei Dedekin. In the same 1894 version, we can see something which is very important for the idea that I want to develop here. That Dedekin uh, identifies the collections of numbers that he wants to deal with and uh, uses them in two different ways. One way is collections that are the object of our study, of our research, and other collections which are used as tools to investigate those collections. So for example, he gives in the 1894 version an introductory treatment of Galois theory, in which you have the fields and the subfields related, say, to the roots or generated by roots of a certain polynomial, and then you have the group 
which is a tool with groups and subgroups and the interconnection between those and those, that are the tools that allows you to investigate the properties of the field subfields, the polynomials and the roots. For us, of course, groups and, uh, and fields are, uh, we would say, beasts of the same species. But this was not the case for Dedekin. And this is one of the, uh, of the, um, uh, of the steps that you can see very interestingly happening between Dedekin and Netter, even though some of the basic ideas were already in Dedekin, but he still, for him, the fields and the subfields were always a, a subject of study with which, or, or, on which we can make our investigations with the help of other tools, such as groups in the case of Galois theory and ideas in the case of factorization theory for um, fields of, uh, fields of uh, uh, extensions of the rationals, quadratic fields, etc. So again, we have fields and we have a tool to investigate how the algebraic uh, integers in those fields behave with respect to factorization. Still, Dedekind was not completely satisfied with the achievements of the various versions and just to uh, show you an interesting example of that, we find in the 1894 version one of the propositions that he proves that looks at the determinant built with rows uh, whose uh, members are the coefficients of a given number in with respect to a given basis of the system and he proves whatever he proves there and in the end he says this proof is not satisfactory because it depends upon specific choices of numbers and moreover because the theory of determinants is alien to the proper content of the theory. So why, why should a, a, a proof in which we use determinants be alien to the spirit or to the proper content, content of a theorem that has to do with factorization? Well, this is the kind of ideas that we can find in Dedekin who was trying to build a certain kind of approach to algebra. It was not clear to him exactly what that should be, but we can see in the various uh, versions of the theory of ideas, first of all, but also in his work on Galois theory or whatever, how he is groping his way toward that place in which specific choices, specific representations like in a determinant, is not the proper way to approach these essential uh, theorems of algebra. And just to show you that this was not a common view at the time, uh, we can consider a famous letter by Frobenius to Weber, two very important prominent algebraists of the time who knew the work of Dedekin and follow it very closely. But when it came, for example, to writing a book of algebra, then uh, Frobenius was not convinced that Dedekind's very abstract approach would be the right one. So in, 18, in, in, in 1893, he writes to his friend Weber and he says the following, your announcement of a work on algebra makes me very happy. Hopefully, you will follow Dedekind's way, way, yet avoid the highly abstract approach that he so eagerly pursues now. His newest edition of the Vorlesungen contains so many beautiful ideas, but his permutations are so flimsy and it is indeed unnecessary to push the abstraction so far. I am therefore satisfied that you write the algebra and not our venerable friend and master, who had also one considered that plan. And indeed, Weber wrote this very important book that started to appear in 18, 1895, became the classic book of al textbook of algebra from the end of the 19th century and in the next two decades at least, and in which you can see very important uh, advances in algebra, Galois theory, etc., but not of the very abstract kind that Dedekind had started to develop, and that will actually become ripe only in 1930 when uh, the new book, the new classical textbook of algebra, 
will appear, and this is of course Moderne Algebra by Van der Waden, who was written under the influence of Eminetter. Of course, there are other influences like Cartin, but basically this is the book that reflects the way in, in which Eminetter would now construct and conceive of the whole of algebra. So, going back for a minute to Dedekind, if we look at his work at the various versions of the theory of ideas, we would see that on the one hand you have the subject matter, fields, algebraic integers. These are systems that we, their interrelations constitute the subject matter of what he calls higher, higher arithmetic. And then you have ideas like, or new concepts like ideas or modules, like groups in Galois theory, with which you would investigate these other collections of numbers. So they are not exactly in the same status for Dedekind. So we have concepts, theorems, and proofs that are uh, uh, successively formulated so as to avoid the need for choosing specific elements, and this is done with the help of those tools, ideals, models, etc. And the passage from this conception uh, that appears in the book of Weber. This is something that Dedekind starts to change, and as I said, only at the time of Netter and with the book of Van der Waden actually become right. But in the way, we, we spoke here about 50 years, in the way many important developments take place. And those are, we need to understand them as part of that, that process that led from Dedekind to Netter. So, for example, one of the important milestones in this way is uh, uh, Hilbert Salmerich, published in 1896, where he took the works of Dedekind and Kronecker, but adopted mainly the point of view of Dedekind, and he even says in the introduction, this is a very famous quotation, that he says, I have, I have tried to avoid Kummer's elaborate computational machinery so that here too Riemann's principle may be realized and the proof completed not by calculation but purely by ideas. What does it mean by ideas? N meaning concepts such as those of Dedekind in which, as I said, the individual uh, numbers of the systems considered are not those that we use uh, uh, in order to build our theorems but, or our proofs for the theorems, but, but rather the interrelations between the subsets, the subsystems, etc. We could give another example, for example, taken from the, from the work of Hensel on uh, 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 Piadic numbers, especially his book of 1908. Uh, and why this work is so important? Because in 1910, we know that Ernst Steinitz came up with his famous article uh, in which now he puts the fields for the first time as the subject matter that has to be analyzed very similarly, in a very abstract way to that, that Dedekind had already started to introduce. And he says, of course, that one of the basic points was the creation of the Piadic numbers, because it was so different to the other number fields that had been previously considered. And he says, compared with the book of Weber, where, or, where he also had defined uh, fields before him, one, also in a famous article of 1893, uh, his aim was a general treatment of Galois theory, independent of the numerical meaning of the elements, but now he says, for us, it is the concept of field which represents the focus of interest. And, well, I cannot go into all the details here, but the approach followed by Steinitz in his study of abstract fields was obviously a main uh, starting point, for example, for Nette in her own work on rings, and abstract rings and ideas within them, and this is very clearly reflected in the way in which Van der Waden's book is built as a hierarchy of uh, algebraic structures, which was, again, this is a kind of reflection or taking Dedekind's point of view to, to, its, to its final consequences, and this is what Emi Netter actually did, uh, and, and this is why this is not very accurate to say that everything was in Dedekind. Perhaps the seeds and many of the potential ideas were there, but a lot of work had to be done still in order to complete this new image of 
uh, of, a, of algebra about which we may speculate that Dedekind perhaps would have been very happy, but that, that was not exactly what he achieved and what he actually had in his mind, because he, had, he didn't have the, the complete conception of algebra formulated in these terms. So, in a sense, of course, it, it was very proper for Netter to give this credit to Dedekind as the person who started and who gave the main ideas, but those 50 years that passed from 1871 to 1921 were full with developments and Emi Netter was the person who finally put all these ideas together into this uh, general conception of algebra that was so strongly reflected in Van der Waarden's book and you know from then on algebra has been something completely different as we know it nowadays. Thank you very much. <laughs>